What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you're having a good week. Today, I'm going to be making an addition to my Leadership is Mail series. So let's delve in. Before I begin, I'd just like to mention that the information and analysis in this video is courtesy of the scholarship of Bill Mauser and Dr. Wayne Grudem, as well as the brilliance of non-tenant. So I am indebted to those gentlemen for their work in this area. If you're ever in dialogue or conversation with someone who advocates for female leadership, one of the biblical figures they will almost always immediately point to is Deborah. Stripped from her historical and biblical context, Deborah is lifted up as the heroic alpha female icon who clearly disproves the universal biblical command that women should not rule. So what are genuine believers to make of Deborah? Is she a clear example from scripture that women should have leadership duties in the church, the family, and human society? Or is the sacred writer of Judges communicating something else to us? Let me just mention some important foundational things before we interact with the egalitarian eisegesis of this text. Female leadership proponents frequently commit the incidental fallacy. As Dr. Jason Lyle has pointed out, some of God's commands are general and for everyone, but others are for a specific individual at a specific time. There are two ways to read Judges 4 and 5. The first is to see these chapters as a commendation of women rulers, and the second is to see them as an indictment of them. In his article, But What About Deborah? Non-Tenet has powerfully demonstrated that the latter is the correct interpretation. When Isaiah walked around naked for three years, he was calling attention to the concept of shame. He was enacting a graphic living parable of Israel's humiliation. Those Isianic texts do not in any way undermine the scriptural injunctions against nakedness. Rather, they enforce them. And in Judges 4 and 5, our attention is likewise drawn to shame, because we see an inversion of the created order. But before we provide our exegesis, let's take a look at one egalitarian's claim about this passage of scripture. Stanley Grenz says, Deborah served as the highest leader of her people, although she was married. Her leadership role included the exercise of authority over men. The example of Deborah confirms that neither God nor the ancient Hebrews found female leadership intrinsically abhorrent. On the contrary, a woman could, and did, exercise authority over the entire community, including men. Firstly, the text does not say that Deborah ruled over God's people, or taught them publicly, or led them militarily. Deborah is never said to have taught the people in any assembled group or congregation. Deborah was never a priest. In the Old Testament, it was the duty of the priests to teach scripture to the people, and Deborah never held this office. Secondly, Deborah herself contradicts the faulty egalitarian interpretation of Judges 4 and 5. In the triumphal song, she herself denies that her place is one of rulership. In Judges 5, 7, she describes her role as that of a mother in Israel. A mother had a great deal of influence in the household, but she was not the ruler of the house. And Deborah plainly does not see herself in the position of the patriarch. She clearly sees Barak in that position, reluctant as he is. And she desires for herself a feminine role in accordance with God's creative decree. In Judges 4, 6, and 7, Deborah refused to lead the people in military battle, but insisted that a man do this. In fact, as Tom Schreiner has pointed out, Deborah has no military function. Even when instructions are given to Barak, the directive comes from Yahweh himself, not Deborah. This is contrary to the rulership of a patriarch. In Judges 4, 8, and 9, when Barak refuses to take up his mantle without Deborah present, her statement at this point is strikingly antithetical to egalitarianism. She says, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the honor shall not be yours on the journey that you are about to take, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hands of a woman. This again strongly demonstrates that the Deborah as shame interpretation of Judges 4 and 5 is the correct one. Even Deborah's introduction in the narrative emphasizes the unusual nature of the situation in Israel at the time. The sacred writer piles on words to emphasize Deborah's gender. Now Deborah, a woman, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she is judging Israel at that time. Something is abhorrent and terribly wrong. There are no men to function as judges. This fact is confirmed by the aforementioned account of the timid Barak. Lastly, as both Bill Mauser and Wayne Grudem have pointed out, Deborah is noticeably absent from the catalog of judges in two key texts. In 1 Samuel 12, 9 through 11, when Samuel recounts Israel's history and comes to the period of time in which Deborah lived, he mentions four judges including himself and Barak, but he does not mention Deborah. Likewise, in Hebrews 11.32, the sacred writer there does a similar thing. He lists four judges in a row, Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah. 
One of these judges, Beric, is active during the time period in which Deborah lived, yet he is the one mentioned as the judge, not Deborah. In summation, Judges 4 and 5 point to the fact that female leadership is shameful and contrary to God's creative decree and his intention and purpose for the duties that he has assigned for men and women in the church, the family, and human society. For a fuller look at the patriarchal, gendered, piety understanding of this passage of scripture, in other words, the correct understanding, please read Nan's article, but what about Deborah? I've provided a link below. For the complementarian view, you can check out chapter 4 of Wayne Grudem's book, Evangelical Femme and Biblical Truth. All right, guys, that's a wrap for now. Ladies and gents, if you want to share your own thoughts, be sure to do so in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching guys. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. You can also follow me on Instagram. I posted a link below. Have an awesome rest of your week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.